As we gather this morning on Pentecost Sunday, we recognized our need for God. Hearing the prayers that we lifted up today, we know that we can't do this life on our own. Broken hearts, crushed dreams, aching bodies, we need God to come and enter into our lives and our worlds and do a new thing. And that's what we're celebrating here today, that God can come and breathe new life into us. We're going to be looking at the passage from Ezekiel on the Valley of the Dry Bones, being reminded of God's promise to be with us and work a miracle in us. So let me invite Mike Sabrin to come forward and to read our scripture reading today for us from Ezekiel 37, verses 1 to 14. The hand of the Lord was on me, and he brought me out by the Spirit of the Lord and set me in the middle of a valley. It was full of bones. He led me back and forth among them, and I saw a great many bones on the floor of the valley, bones that were very dry. He asked me, Son of man, can these bones live? I said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. Then he said to me, Prophesy to these bones and say to them, Dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to these bones. I will make breath enter you, and you will come to life. I will attach tendons to you and make flesh come upon you and cover you with skin. I will put breath in you and you will come to life. Then you will know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as I was commanded. And as I was prophesying, there was a noise, a rattling sound, and the bones came together, bone to bone. I looked, and, and tendons and flesh appeared on them, and, and skin covered them. But there was no breath in them. Then he said to me, prophesy to the breath. Prophesy, son of man, and say to it, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Come, breath. From the four winds, and breathe into these slain, that they may live. So I, I prophesied as he commanded me, and, and breath entered them. They came to life and stood upon their feet, a, a vast army. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the people of Israel. They say, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. We are cut off. Therefore, prophesy and say to them, this is what the Sovereign Lord says. My people, I am going to open your graves and bring you up from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel. Then you, my people, will know that I am the Lord when I open your graves and bring you up from them. I will put my spirit in you, and you will live. And I will settle you in your own land. Then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, and I have done it, declares the Lord. This is one of my favorite passages in all of the Bible, and it has such a rich history behind it. The passage is set in a difficult time in the history of God's people. God had promised to be the Israelites' people, to be their God and have them be his people. And he promised to love and protect them and take care of them all the days of their lives. 
and he made a promise to Abraham that he would make them as numerous as the stars in the sky. But by the time we get to Ezekiel's day, Israel had rebelled against God and turned away from him. They had sought other gods to protect and provide for them, and they no longer put God first in their lives. As a result, God allowed Israel to be divided in two and taken into captivity. And by the time we find ourselves in this story in Ezekiel, both the northern and the southern kingdoms had been taken into captivity. In Jerusalem, the holy city was captured, and Ezekiel, along with many of the other Jews, had been taken off into slavery. And Ezekiel's role here in God's plan for his people was to prophesy to them, to tell them that they had gone astray, and then invite them back into God's loving care for them. And it's here we find ourselves this morning, hearing God's promise of redemption and forgiveness. Israel had lost everything, and she was all but dead and gone, beyond hope, in desperate need of a savior. And it's at this moment that God steps in and gives Ezekiel this magnificent vision of hope for new life. And he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to them, to walk in this valley, to be surrounded by these bones, these dry bones, and to contemplate what this meant for Israel. And God has him walk up and down amongst these bones and to ponder what their future might be. We as the reader are left wondering what these bones signify. Are they a battlefield? Perhaps where Israel was overcome by Babylon? Was it a graveyard? And if so, why weren't the bones properly cared for? You see, in Israel's day, bones had such a sacred meaning. They weren't just the building blocks of one's physical body, but they were the very essence of the soul. And to have them scattered about, raw and unguarded in the sun, meant that there was something desperately wrong. Israel had been desolated, and all that was left now to show of her glory was a pile of dried out, dead bones. And it's this image, the valley of the dry bones, that echoed in Israel's heart what they had already been feeling, dead and gone, no hope to be found. She had forsaken God, and so God had allowed her to experience the consequences of her sin. And like her lifeless body, her hopes and her dreams were lying bare at Ezekiel's feet. She was all but crushed. And here God asks, son of man, can these bones live? What a ridiculous question when you think about it. Maybe, just maybe, a newly dead body could come back to life. But never, ever the dry, worn out bones that lied at Ezekiel's feet. But it was the question that must have been burning in his heart, and in Israel's heart. Can these bones live? Is there hope yet to be found? Ezekiel's answer is an interesting one. It's hard to tell if he spoke sarcastically or with confidence when he said, Sovereign Lord, you alone know. But in his response, we hear complete surrender. He recognizes there's nothing he can do to serve these bones. But he hasn't yet given up hope that God can still work a miracle. And while Israel can do nothing herself to save herself, we find that with God, all things are possible, even life after death. And I wonder, as we gather here this morning for worship, how we relate to Israel. What parts of our lives feel dead and gone? A loss that grips hold of you and won't let go. A fear of not knowing what tomorrow brings. Knowing that we have no control over the pain and suffering of this world. Or even the fear of a faith that has drifted away. A love with God that once was so passionate doesn't say, hold the same grip on your heart anymore. You don't know what to do. For me, many of my deepest fears and worries come from my body, which seems to betray me. 
falling apart piece by piece, never really knowing what's happening. But it's at this point when all seems hopeless that God enters in and does the impossible. Just when it seems like there's nothing left to be done, suddenly the Spirit of God appears and transforms everything that she touches. And it's out of this graveyard of Israel's destruction that God gives new life. And so he tells Ezekiel to prophesy to the dry bones, telling them to say that God says, I will put breath in you and you will come to life. And then you will know that I am the Lord. And so Ezekiel starts to prophesy of God's great promises. And all around him, the bones start to rattle and shake. And they start to move together, bone to bone, tendon and flesh appearing skin wrapping the bones, bodies laying before Ezekiel. Yet there was still no life in them. So God commands Ezekiel to prophesy and call the breath of God to call upon the four winds to come and fill these bodies and bring them back to life again. And so he does. And all before him, right before his very eyes, what once was bones, Stand up before their God, a vast army before him. Can you imagine it? To be surrounded by the dry bones of your people, the broken hearts and dreams of Israel, and to be a part of God resurrecting his kingdom. God breathes life into death, and miraculously, Israel rises to her feet, and stands before her God. It's amazing to me that what all seemed hopeless, that this was the moment that God chose to move into action. Israel cried out to God saying, our bones are dried up and our hope is gone. But God replies, my people, I'm going to open up your graves and bring you out from them. I will bring you back to the land of Israel, and then you, my people, will know that I am Lord when I open up your graves and bring you up from them. And I will pour my spirit in you, and you will live, and I will settle you into your own land, and then you will know that I, the Lord, have spoken, that I, the Lord, have done it. Our God does the impossible bringing life out of death, hope out of despair. And he fills his people with his spirit and brings them to life once again. And he promises that once again, we will be his people and he will be our God, that we'll be freed from the captivity and pain and struggles of this life. We'll get to experience the joy of the promised land. And so with a mighty show of power, the people of God will know, without a shadow of a doubt, that our God is Lord. We all have had times in our life when death threatens to overtake us, when there's no end in sight to the suffering and pain we feel, and we feel ourselves slipping into despair. But the good news is, we have a God that can overcome even the greatest of threats, a God who has overcome the grave. I've seen it in my own life, God healing the wounds of my childhood, bringing me together with Aaron, healing my body when I had all but given up hope, blessing me with such an incredible church. I've seen it in the life of our congregation, filling us with new energy and passion invigorating our ministry in ways we never would have expected, taking what once was just dry bones and making us dance again. I wonder if you have seen God at work in your own life in this way, if you've experienced God transform what once was dead into something that was alive again, if maybe God has worked a miracle in your own heart and given you hope when you had none left. Or maybe today you feel that 
level of despair and you are in need of a miracle. You're worn down to the bones and there's no end in sight. The hope we find today in our passage is that sometimes things will get to the point where it feels hopeless, but it's okay because we have a God who can overcome the grave. He does the impossible and he works a miracle when we least expect it. I don't know what God's plan is for your life, for my life. I don't know what God's plan is for our church, but I know that he has a plan. We are God's beloved children. He promises to take care of us, to do a mighty work in our lives, to show himself to be Lord. I'm reminded by this passage of the early church where God poured down his Holy Spirit amongst his people and enabled them to prophesy and perform great miracles and do great signs in God's name. And it's the same here today that Jesus promised to send his Holy Spirit and to fill his people with his very presence and to equip us for the work that lays ahead. In so many ways, we might feel dead and gone, but here in the valley of the dry bones, we are reminded that new life is possible. We serve a God who has overcome the grave. He promises to bring us back to new life as well. It's what we celebrate this day as we come before God's table in communion. It's what we celebrate on Pentecost as God's spirit is alive and well, that he's moving in and among us. He's doing amazing things, that God is transforming everything that he touches. Let us pray. God, we ask that you would send your spirit upon us today, that we would know the power of your love that we would see the incredible work that you can do in our lives. God, for those of us who are struggling today, we ask that you would work a miracle. God, that you would transform our broken hearts and our broken lives into something incredible. That you would help us to know without a shadow of a doubt that you are God. God, we ask that your spirit would fill us and enable us to do your work, that we could share the love that we have received with all those that we come in contact with. God, we thank you for all you have done for us. And we know that with you, all things are possible. Amen.